Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to show you some great tips on how you can farm and sell some of the highest selling items in the game. Let's kick off the video with the rare seed. When you grow a rare seed, it can turn into what's called a sweet gem berry and that's what you see before you. A ginger island farm filled up to the top with these amazing crops. Now it takes 24 days for a sweet gem berry to grow. If you don't have the ginger island farm you can plant these in fall and it will take most of fall to grow because it's 24 days. Now the beauty about these sweet gem berries are that they can't be further processed but that's a good thing because you don't need to further process these. These sell for amazing amounts of money. Now the reason why I have so many is because I have basically just farmed these over and over and just put them into the seed machines until I've had enough to fill out the whole farm. So as you can see here now after getting a lot of gold ones, silver ones and regular ones, what I do is I sell the gold and the silver but I will put the regular ones back into the seed makers to make more, to plant more. And normally nine times out of ten when you put the regular ones back into the seed makers you do get enough to kind of fill out the farm again so the process continues. Now these sweet gem berries have multiple uses. Uh, one of the main reasons for them is actually to, to bring one into the secret forest and give it to a statue on the very left and you'll get back a star drop. But another great way you can utilize these is to sell them. They go for extraordinary amounts of money. I'm going to sell some here now in a second and I'll show you what kind of money you can get for these. Now I didn't use any sort of fertilizers to grow these. I just grew them as they are no modifications just to show you what they can actually bring in on an average farm that invests in these crops as you can see here what i got back from the seed makers was enough to almost fill out the farm it was just missing a patch there at the bottom so i got about 1.6 million here now for um almost a farm worth of sweet gem berries as you can see the gold goes for 4500 silver goes for 3750 that is an extraordinary amount of money but here's the best part you can actually get a lot more money for these. All you need is deluxe fertilizer, and I'm going to show that now. I'm also going to take a farmer's lunch with a key seasoning to increase my farming level by four. So what I have now is deluxe fertilizer on the ground, and I also have a buff from the farmer's lunch. So I have a huge farming skill at the moment, because the higher your farming skill, the bigger chance you have in harvesting higher tier crops but just bear in mind that you need the deluxe fertilizer to actually get you the iridium tier quality crops without the deluxe fertilizer you cannot get the iridium tier quality crops as you can see here now most of the crops i have gotten were iridium tier a lot of gold tier and very very few regular and silver tier and to be honest i think the regular and silver tier crops was because i forgot to put down some <laughs> deluxe fertilizer and some of the some of the spots around the farm so i'm going to sell all these crops now just to see what kind of a profit that we get so we're probably going to make millions again <laughs> just like last time this is a great way to make millions by the way in this game just to ignore the catfish here. it was just a present from willie i think three point almost 3.7 million i got there from that one so that is the power of buff food and deluxe fertilizer as we can see we get six thousand gold for an iridium quality sweet gem berry that is absolutely insane so if you do that process you will make loads of money grow your sweet gem berries in ginger island put them into the seat maker and just rinse and repeat until you have a full farm filled up to the top with lovely sweet gem berries despite the quality of the crop uh, a whole lot of people don't like these i believe it's a neutral like uh, it's not a love Next up, we have the fairy roses. Now, fairy roses are totally underestimated. You can make and you can do amazing things with these. And I'm going to show you what you can do with them. I'm going to show you how you can almost break the game using fairy roses. You can get so rich with these, it is crazy. So, I basically just farmed up a whole farm worth of fairy roses. I have hundreds. I'm now going to go to my sheds and I'm going to get my diamonds because I'm going to make what's called fairy dust and I'm going to show you the power of fairy dust in this video and how overpowered it is. I've got two sheds here filled up to the top of crystallariums. All these crystallariums only generate 
diamonds because you need fairy roses and diamonds to make the fairy dust and you can get the fairy dust recipe from completing the quest that the old woman gives you just to the just to the left of your farm on ginger island so i just made loads of fairy dust here now. and next up i'm going to go into my greenhouse and i'm going to get my ancient fruits so as you can see, I kind of I just use the greenhouse for the ancient fruits. I don't really bother putting these over in Ginger Island because there's just so much more you can do over there. You know, this is enough for the ancient fruits for me at the moment. Now, what I'm going to do is the, I'm going to put these ancient fruits through a process, and I'm going to use the fairy dust, which basically eliminates the time needed for me to get lovely iridium quality ancient fruit wine. As you can see, I just used the fairy dust on the kegs here with the ancient fruit inside and. The fairy dust immediately finishes the keg process. As you can see here, it also immediately finishes the cask process, meaning if you got fairy dust, you can get iridium quality wine straight away. The only downfall is that you need three fairy dust per cask, if the cask starts out on level one, we'll say, because you need one for the silver star, one for the gold star, and one for the iridium star before you can actually get the wine. But if you stock up on sheds with diamonds and if you grow lots of fairy roses, then you can make lots of fairy dust and you can and if you can basically cut down a process that takes almost three seasons to one day utilizing this item. It's an absolute game changer. Ancient fruit alone is 28 days to grow. It takes 6.25 days in a keg and then it can take uh, seasons, multiple seasons for it to fully mature in a cask. So this is, so look at this, 4,620 gold and that's all in a day's work thanks to the lovely fairy dust. Absolute game changer. You have to try it. If you have the Ginger Island 1.5 update, try it out. Next up we have radioactive bars. Now, I actually released a video there last week or two weeks ago on how to, on the best way to farm radioactive ore. So I'm not going to showcase that in this video because there's a video already out on the best ways to get that. So check that video out. The reason why I'm showing radioactive bars in this video is because if you have the blacksmith perk in mining, metal bars are worth 50% more. And these radioactive bars will get you an absolute fortune. Let's check it out. Let's go into the mining tab here now. 4,500 gold for one radioactive bar. Oh, and that's just five radioactive ore. You could farm these every day and make extraordinary amounts of money. And the video that I made there two weeks ago showcases some very easy ways to get those. Next up, we have the artifact troves. These items are amazing. If you've got Omni Geodes lying around the place, if you don't need warp totems to the desert, and if you don't need clips to break open Omni Geodes for any items in particular, trade them in for treasure troves and get Clint to break those open. What we're looking for here are pearls, golden pumpkins, and pirates' treasures. It's all these items will get you huge amounts of money. So I'm just going to skip to the parts where I actually got something good out of these treasure troves. I brought in over 100, just slightly over 100. And it's only 25 gold to get Clint to break open one of these. You're almost guaranteed a profit every time he breaks one open. Treasure chest, 5,000 gold. Golden pumpkin, 2,500 gold. So they're some of the things you can get once you get access to the desert, if you know if you want to swap in some Omni Geodes, the treasure chest is amazing. Next up, we have the uh, we have the beehives, but these beehives are different from regular ones. They are connected to a fairy rose. So if you plant a beehive within four tiles of a fairy rose, you will get fairy rose honey, and fairy rose honey sells for huge amounts of money absolutely huge now uh, a beehive just requires level 3 farming 40 wood 8 coal 1 iron bar and a maple syrup and you can make a beehive absolutely no problem 952 gold for the fairy rose honey that is absolutely amazing and all it, all you need is just four nights to pass and you can get your hands on this the best place to put these beehives are ginger island because it's basically just like a giant greenhouse you know you'll have uptime on your beehives all the time Next up, honourable mention, rabbits, rabbit's foots. So if you reach max friendship with your rabbits, there's a very good chance they'll generate a rabbit's foot for you, um, instead of generating a, a wool. So I'm just going to take all the wood and the rabbit's foots here, and I'm also just going to showcase the pigs. Now, I, I suppose everyone that's watching this knows about the pigs, you know how great they are, but just in case, 
If you look here, I have the gatherer profession and the botanist profession. This means I have a chance to pick up double the forageables. And every time I pick up a forageable, it will be an iridium quality forageable. Also, if the pigs are max friendship, they have about a 66% chance to find an additional truffle for you. So, best case scenario, you can net four truffles from one pig per day. And that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Let's have a look. Ooh, almost a million there. Let's see what we got. Iridium wool, 816 gold. Iridium rabbit's foot, 1,356. And a truffle, 1,250. And last but certainly not least, we have the wood, 2 gold. <laughs> that was just a joke. I just saw, I, I think I cut out a chain and got that wood. But look at the truffle there, you know. You just can't beat pigs in this game. I must do a video actually where it's literally one year of golden chickens and pigs and see which one gets the most money because you got to factor in rain and winter as well so what i'm going to show here is a quarry setup which is solar panels now just so you know it's much better to put solar panels in the desert because solar panels require sunny days to generate batteries uh, and the thing about the quarry is that during the winter you've got snowy days you know you can have rainy days so they're not going to generate batteries for you 500 gold for the battery pack that is why solar panels are totally underestimated and overpowered you can get huge amounts of money if you make a solar panel farm plus you're bringing lovely green energy to stardew valley how bad so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it i'll upload the next stardew valley video in the next day or two so stay tuned for that and as always i hope you have a great day bye for now thanks for watching don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.